I know that I have been very conscious of trying to make better decisions when it comes to food and nutrition, but also the impact that our family has on the environment. But with so many stories in the media about the impact of red meat, I wanted to try and understand what its environmental impact actually is, especially with the farmers here in Britain, and whether or not it's good for us to be eating red meat. Hi Michael, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Can you tell me a little bit about your career and what it is that you do? Hi Emma, lovely to meet you. So at the moment I'm Deputy Vice-Chancellor at Harper Adams University, um, which is a university which specialises in land use and agriculture, looking at sustainable agriculture particularly. So my background has really been driven about the role that livestock can play in a healthy world and a healthy future. clear you know that a healthy balanced diet um, includes many aspects of different types of foods um, you know and if you look at the eat well guide which is driven by leading human nutritionists um, animal products have a critical role to play um, the plate should predominantly be plants um, fruit and vegetables and that's clear on the eat well guide but a moderate responsible amount of animal-based products does drive a human health and is the most healthy plate. So well, why do we have animal products on there? Well, they're the, the richest um, in terms of key nutrients, particularly if you think about protein and essential amino acids and the makeup of different amino acids from the plate. The, the, the animal-based products would ensure you get the correct balance of these amino acids. And because you've got a small amount of animal-based products on the plate, it increases the availability of the nutrients within the plants. I never knew that. I never knew that actually by eating small amounts of meat as well as all the vegetables, that actually it's helping you get the most of all the vegetables. So how many times a week should we be eating meat? You know, the WHO, so the World Health Organization, gives a value of 70 grams per day as being the maximum really we should consume of red meat. Well, they've set a level because too much of a good thing is not a good thing. <laughs> it's a, a, a shame that that's true. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's the same with chocolate, I'm afraid. I was just about to say that. <laughs> there are certain differences between fatty acid compositions and contents between um, um, the, the, the different red meats and also amounts of iron that's within those and the amounts of zinc. And of course, how those animals have been raised is going to influence the balance of those nutrients. If we consider about what British meat does and how it's different, you know, it's embedded within our, our, our rural communities. It's embedded in the fact of the type of land we have within the UK, which if you look at the UK, it's predominantly grassland. The topography of the land, hill lands, uplands, the types of soils that we have, and the lovely meteorological conditions that we have, which means the amount of rain. <laughs> All that rain. <laughs> Absolutely, which makes it very challenging to utilise that land for arable systems. So classically, we've been very good at growing grass and raising fantastic animals utilising that resource. And I think what's really interesting is all the farmers that I've met are so proud of the standards that they work to. When we saw Richard on his farm, he was so proud in telling us all the standards that he kind of works to to look after his animals and the welfare and the care that is taken. How does that compare to other countries? You know, if, if we think about how the UK has, you know, set up in terms of its livestock sector, you know, they are um, predominantly grass based. Um, the, there's an embedded value in terms of welfare and natural behaviour. Um, and we're really focusing on uh, environmental parameters. So, for example, the NFU's view of moving towards net zero for agriculture by 2040. And it's very hard to say that other countries are not moving in a similar direction. They are, of course they are. But embedded within that value is what's been driven by um, UK agriculture. And I think we just really need to support them. Why 
why do you think it's really important for shoppers to look for the red tractor when they're buying red meat? It's it's very difficult when you're shopping because there's so many different labels and brands and things to look for and having something that's easily identifiable that covers those key values that we all hold dear when we're shopping is it is, is great it's been fantastic talking to you thank you so much i've learned loads <laughs> you're welcome emma thank you very much okay take care Talking to Michael has helped give some balance and some reassuring facts about how beef and lamb is farmed here in the UK. So it's just reminded me how proud we should be of our British farmers, especially when tucking into our Sunday roast. <laughs>